Hello, Brother Monroe here. Welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts, where we're going to kick off with some convoy action. Uh, things still going on in the Caribbean. Uh, going to try into Cuba, but I'm also going to try and take Costa Rica. We've got lots of ships in the area. Um, I don't think the Cuba one is, is going to work, but it's worth rolling the dice on. Um... But uh, yeah, Costa Rica and just mopping up all of the Central American possessions of the United States and uh, making them German, <laughs> giving us yet more money. <laughs> um, absolutely insane economy that Germany has now, thanks to its vast colonial empire hey uh, where are the escorts escorts there's quite a there are quite a few escorts it's a bit concerned that we've come upon the transports straight away I mean for them Hmm. Oh well, six inch guns will make a mess of them. Fifteen transports, I'll do it. No sign of the escorts. Well, I guess I'm time lapse in this. See you soon. Alright, there we go. Uh, the Goslar and the Vernigaroda uh, need uh, ammunition. But, uh, yep, all the transport's gone. Good. Right, what was the other one? Aha, it is an LK3. I'm not sure we've seen them in combat yet. Uh, against the Pasadena. So, a good chance to see how the LK3s do. Here she is, the Sheberg. I'll wait until she stops with the jiggling. There we go. Not a bad looking ship. It's it's the same light cruiser that literally every single country in the game has, but um, you know, twelve six inch guns couple of twos for extra shootiness and the side torpedo broadside. It's a pretty versatile ship, I would say. And that is a very old protected cruiser <laughs> with two seven-inch guns. They have vanished. Continue to close then.
we go. Finally got some solid hits. Big torps going out. That's a demon though. Oh, she ran, did run into the torps. Getting pretty beaten up. Good, good, good. Lovely. Well, uh, with that, we can uh, head back to the map and end the turn. All right. Next month, uh, we've got another convoy. Time guarded by the Toledo and the Salt Lake City. Eight transports. And it's the Flamenschwert and the Heidelberger who are attacking. Very nice. Uh, I messed up where I was moving the fleet. I had too many going to Cuba and not enough going to Costa Rica. I fixed that. Um, Cuba one actually looks promising. It's on 100% currently, but I'm trying to do two invasions at once. Probably go down a little bit. Uh, I've also ordered the Graf Spey over to the Caribbean because uh, she is now finished commissioning. I think she'll be a useful addition. I've left the other two uh, SK-1s at home. Um, and uh, our shipyards are now pretty free, so I should really do some designing. Just not quite sure. I want to do the SK-2s. Um, but uh, I'll need to check to see if I have the 23,000 ton heavy cruiser tech. And there's no escorts. So uh, I think this is going to be queuing the music and uh, seeing you in a couple, well, probably like a minute. There we go. As predicted, the escorts not interested. Oh well, back to the map. Uh, that was actually the only battle this month. Uh, and not ship design, but uh, the tech I want unlocks next month. And I can take the priority off. So that's the 23,000 ton heavy cruiser, which means I can start on the SK-2s next month, which is absolutely perfect. Um, Yorick still heading over to San Francisco to cause trouble. Uh, Panama Canal is now working for us by the looks of it. That's good. Uh, this is, I think, the Americans trying to retake Panama. But uh, they're failing at that. They have taken Ecuador. So we will have to try and get that back off them at some point. Um, and yeah, I just need the turn to take over so I can check all these things. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to see you in the next turn. All right, uh, welcome to December. So this is now, got, has gone down a little bit. It's now at 96, but this one's at 100, so that's absolutely fine. I do have a convoy battle to do, but I'll come back to that in a second because we have everything we need to make the SK-2s. I'm really gonna be building two of these because uh, these are basically gonna be Scharnhorst and uh, uh, Gneisenau. Uh, Advanced Armoured Cruiser 2, that's what we're after. Because um, now we can build the full-sized thing. Excellent. Now, these have a maximum speed of 29.5 knots. What the SK-1's? 29. So let's have them go at 29 as well. So they're not going to be the fastest cruisers in the world. Uh, but I think... Uh, this one, kind of here, and then, uh, what's the base actually, 15 and a half, 22. Okay, these are significantly better, but they look awful. <laughs> I just, I really like the triangular towers. I know they're not as good, but I'll go with the triangular tower. Screw it. Can't tell me what to do. Um, medium barbette, and we're going to go. Triple elevens. Three of them. Four. Essentially, the Sean Horst 
design, but uh, an actual uh, but building as a as a as a super cruiser, heavy cruiser, not as a not trying to pretend that it's a battleship, which it's not. Uh, right, secondary guns could in theory try and go for fives. Uh, that would be significantly heavier than what the SK ones have. Yeah, it could fit three five-inch triple guns. I think the SK ones just had the two-inch guns, uh, which I don't think we'll bother with. Oh, no, we could do twins. We could do twin... We could have a couple of twin two-inch like that. There we go. Uh, maybe a couple two twin two-inch guns on the back as well. So a much lighter tertiary battery, but well, I think. Well, no, no, only one set because I think these had twelve, didn't they? Uh, twelve triples. Okay, so it is lighter. Uh, yeah, we'll go for something like this. All right. Can we make them run on diesels? Probably. Oops, unbalanced, unbalanced. Put five. All the protection. Gonna stick with the turtle back because we're Germans. Uh, standard ratio of shells, which is normal for me on a cruiser. Two powder two, that's nice. Auto two loaders, Jesus. Coincidence five, sonar, uh, RDF, no depth charge. And we have plenty of displacement left. That's what I like to see. Let's have a look at these guns. Uh, fire rate, fire rate. 1.42 rounds per minute. And that's with no crew upgrades. Very nice. Very nice. Indeed. Right, armor-wise, I'd love to go for a 12.6. That is quite heavy. But uh, it's it's a good armor scheme if you can get it to fit. Uh, 6, 3, 3, 1.5. Uh, 3% over. That's, that's not terrible. That is not terrible. 3% over. Alright. Uh, mm, I'd really like long range as well. These don't have it. Oh, it's because I haven't put a funnel on. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> that might help. And we have an aft weight offset, which I'll need to fix. I just take the uh, rear guns off. Yep. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we don't need it maxed out like that. In fact, we could probably go... Mm, yeah, we could probably go minimum. 27,705 is actually pretty good. But it might... Be, let's have a look. What happens if I go gear turbine naturals for the same kind of range? Yeah, see, it's he they're heavier. Um, gas turbines... Uh, no, again, heavier. So I think diesels are our best bet. On the minimum setting. Um, how much do I need to shave off here? 700 tons, something like that. Can save a bit by changing the oops, changing the funnel to a smaller one. Yeah, now we're talking like six hundred tons. I could change the main tower as well. That would save me another hundred-ish. Look 
kind of weird being like that. But can we spin them, please? Thank you. Go right. Uh, what do we need to get rid of now? About three hundred tons. What is going to all or nothing do for me? See, that does actually give me a little bit back. All right, let's experiment. Let's go all or nothing. Uh. Let's lower the armor on the five inch guns. And now we're down to yeah, 200 tons. 200 tons. Hmm. Do you have a very slight forward weight offset? Maybe we can bring the uh, forward turret back a little bit. Say axe does actually save me a little bit of displacement. Maybe we can just pull these back ever so slightly. See, now I'm only 19 tons away. If I do that, I'm under my displacement. Have a little bit of an offset, but I can live with it. There we go. How do they compare in terms of cost to the SK-1s? Yeah, they're a little bit more. Uh, what about to a KK-2? Yeah, so they've exceeded the cost of a KK-2. But uh, yes, I think the SK-2s will be a fine addition to the fleet. That basically gives us five of these sk type ships uh, which I think should be fine um, they're uh, they're interesting ships and I kind of like them so yeah we're going to build two and I save that uh, it's just going to be Sean Holson guys now um, and I will get them built and named and uh, I'll see you for that uh, convoy battle in a moment. I lied. <laughs> I actually want to get started on the KK-3s as well. Uh, so this is the uh, modern battlecruiser hull. It's very fast at uh, 36 knots. Um, I, I think I might use the 16 inch gun again, but these things uh, are basically a four turret set up. So this will be our last battle cruiser, basically. And I think I think the 16 inch gun Oh, it doesn't fit on this. Oh, no, that's disappointing. What about 14s? 14s do. Oh, I remember this hull. But does it fit with the Mark IV? 14 shape that's the question okay so i'm gonna to have to wait until i get the mark 414 before i can build this ship okay uh just because i don't want to build it with 14s and then find the guns don't fit it would be fine so what i'm thinking just to show you the design is i'm thinking this but i need to know if those guns it. There is another way of checking, actually, which is to go and check the shared design builder thing. So I'm going to go do that, and uh, I'll come back in a moment. All right, welcome back. Uh, yes, we can make a KK-3 with those 14-inch guns, but I'm not going to write this second because, uh, yeah, I might as well... We're not that... Oh, well, we might be a ways off Mark IVs. But I'm going to wait for the Mark IVs anyway. Um, 
before doing that. The S the SK twos uh, are gonna. Uh, I don't want to. Also, from a content point of view, <laughs> I don't want to be like, "Hey, look, here's a load of building." But um, yeah, that that is my plan to do a KK KK three that kind of goes back a bit. Um, but I can do that. That's that's good. Okay, so uh, convoy time. Uh, the Heidelberger and the Veningaroda. I hope they have added some more bullets. Have found another convoy. Let's go. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Save. Let's go. Do -do 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 -do. And yeah, the SK series, uh, the ones and the twos, I think if we get access to like modern armor and uh, stuff like that, and we get some weight savings, then we can just focus on upping the range, basically. Uh, oh, well, I'm fitting radar. They, they kind of need radar. But we're a ways off radar at the moment, I think. Ooh. Come up, straight up on the transport. Snow escorts. Cue the music. Okay, there was a slight boo-boo in there when uh, I hadn't quite twigged that, yes, there was a destroyer there on low fuel that uh, would be able to fight torpedoes at me, and I was on super time lapse, and they were quite close, uh, but it's fine. Uh, <laughs> didn't lose the ship or anything. So, good stuff. Uh, I'm going to head back to the map. I'm going to end the turn, and I'm going to see what we get next month. Right, one more... Uh, Convoy raid um, to go. It's now January 1924, and the Graf Spey into action. Keen to see how she does. I always a little uh, concerned about AB um, <laughs> main armament layouts, but um, yeah, keen to see the Graf. Well, once she stops uh, bouncing, there we go. Opening fire already. Very keen to see how she does. Right. Um, rest of you. Move in. Grasp me. Looks like she's going to try some long-range sniping. Well, I don't think that's particularly likely. Oh, they disappeared. And a weird thing that when I'm playing Germany, I tend to get these ships with these massive, like, open spaces of deck for shuffleboard or <laughs> something. like this time the Americans are determined to uh, defend their convoy, which is interesting. Out go some torpedoes. Okay, one ship sunk. <laughs> 
Ooh, enemy torpedoes incoming. That was the mobile <laughs> or mobile. I mean, it's American, so it'll be mobile, I think. And the Salt Lake City go down. Oh, ho, ho. that, that was Graf's Bay there. Look at that, main belt pen, 2,000 damage. Very nice. Those heavy cruisers far too old. Well, actually, no. This one was far too old. But this one, the Montana, this was one of the newer ones. So, just getting shredded. Absolutely shredded. And I think that all the escorts sunk. No, there's a couple of destroyers over there. You lot, focus on the... Uh, Destroyers, would you? No, that's not what I want to do. I want to finish off those destroyers. Wow. Okay, they're taking a hell of a beating. I was uh, comparing the SK-2s to uh, the real-life Scharnhorst class. They have the same armament, same kind of armor. It's slightly different layout. Uh, way more on the turrets. Um, belt isn't quite as thick. Uh, but I think the deck is thicker. Um, and yeah, they're smaller and slower, basically. And yeah, they are in the heavy cruiser class, not battleships. Um, Got him. Alright, we're going to end. The uh, destroyers get away. Fine. And they did take... Well, just take one, actually. So one of them gets away. But uh, overall, pretty happy with that. And nice to see the Grass Bay in action straight away. She did 15,000 damage. Which is actually the lowest of all of them. But that's cause mainly because she was shooting at the... Uh, Heavy cruisers, I think. Yeah, she did 7,000 damage to one, 7,000 to the other. Right, and with that, I'm going to end. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again soon for some more Ultimate Apple Dreadnoughts. Bye for now.